What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Honestly Nay, back with another episode of Sexuality. And joining me today is the artist, Audrey Norris, who is creator of Women Behaving Badly. Thank you for coming. Yeah, thanks for having me. Thank you, thank you. Alrighty, so tell me, what is Women Behaving Badly? So the title came from the quote, well-behaved women seldom make history. Yes. So uh, these are women in history who have behaved very poorly according to the general ideas of the times in which they lived. Mm, those nasty women. I know, right? <laughs> um, but yeah, so, you know, these are folks who have not been really put into the history books, women that, especially for the first round, I intentionally picked women that I hadn't heard of before mm. or had heard very little of before. Okay. Um, and so I create paintings. They are mixed media. Mm. So it's a combination of collage, um, acrylic, and stuff. Like whatever stuff it takes. So I've got one that's got bullet shell casings. Mm. One has a uh, toy space shuttle. One of them has little army men that have been turned into Taliban soldiers. Whatever it takes to tell the story. Okay. And then the actual portrait of the woman is painted in watercolor. Wow. Yeah. Harden it up. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> How did you come up with this? Was it like a strike of lightning bolt? And you were just like, I have to create. And this is what came. Or like, tell me about that process. Um. So... It's funny, like I had one story and then I discovered another story. So I'm gonna tell you the first one, okay. the one that I was going with, and then I'll tell you the one that I came, <laughs> that I, I rediscovered. Um, so I love information. I listen to podcasts like freaking crazy. And so um, I was listening to things like Radio Lab, Hidden Brain, you know, a lot of the NPR podcasts. And one of the things that kept coming up was the names of different women from history who like I had never heard of. Mm. Um, example, uh, this was on 99% Invisible, which is about design. But basically like, there, if you go to New York City and you look at any statue in the city mm. and it's a statue of a woman, chances are it's a statue of the same woman. Really? <laughs> yeah, over. She was like basically the world's first supermodel. It was things like that that really sparked me and made me want to do something um, paying homage to these women. Mm -hmm. So um, there's a spot, Coffee at the Point. Uh, I've been showing there once a year since 2014. Nice. And um, you know, my 2016 show was coming up and I was trying to figure out like what I wanted to do. So I chose this idea of women in history and it's kind of taken off and taken over from there. I wow. thought it was gonna be a one-shot deal at mm -hmm. first. Then I was like, I'm gonna do this for at least five years. Then I recently nice. met, met a woman named uh, Jill Teachin, who wrote a book um, that's basically a timeline of women in history from like 16 whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't remember the name. <laughs> Until like the mid 2000s. Wow. And it's like, and it's just year by year. And here's a whole bunch of women who did stuff in this year, and a whole bunch of women did stuff in that year. And I got to meet her. And she signed my book. And uh, I, I asked her, I was like, does this get old? And she was like, no, she's been doing this kind of study for 30 years. And I'm like, well, that blows my five out of the water. <laughs> five year plans are important. Five year plans are important. No one makes 30 year plans. We you make five year plans. I'm totally down for a 30 year plan though, because like, seriously, I'm like two and a half years in and it's, it's still crazy interesting to me. Yes. And so, yeah, I'm all about it. So that's, that's the story I was telling. Okay. <laughs> um, Revision, no, remix. Revision. Remix. Uh, what I discovered was I, I had totally forgotten. So I've, I've been practicing capoeira, it's the Afro-Brazilian martial art, mm -hmm. for the last 12 years. Wow. And in the association that I'm part of, um, we have the first North American woman to be given the rank of mestre, which is like the highest rank that you can achieve in capoeira. Wow. And so, um, Mestre Sueli, she's awesome, awesome lady. And, you know, I was thinking about this idea of the first female whatever, right? And so I wanted to do a series of t-shirts, because I was into t-shirts at the time, mm -hmm. uh, of women in capoeira, and it was called Ela Joga Capoeira, which means she plays capoeira, we play. And um, yeah, this series of shirts was gonna be portraying different women in capoeira who were like either the first or prominent or whatever it was. Um, I got scared. Oh, <laughs> I'd buy the shirts. And I didn't do the series. I'm I'll pre order the back series. Around for it. I'm I will pre order the series. Yeah. Some of them will pre order the series <laughs> of t shirts. 
I have some shirts on the way. I'm gonna come back around for that. I'm not gonna promise those ones yet. But here's the deal. Uh, if you go to my website, which okay. is afrotriangledesigns.com, um, I actually have some shirts for my current series. Nice. So um, I've got the likes of Malala Yousafzai, uh, Dolores Huerta, uh, Lima Bowie, um, so like different women, and they're on shirts already. Mm -hmm. And the cool thing is that it's all print on demand. All of our um, info will be down below, so don't worry, we'll come back around, I got you. So I want to backtrack before we go for it one more time. How long have you been arting? How long have you been creating with the colors and the watercolors? And the media of things yeah um i announced when i was seven years old that i was going to be an artist when i grew up yes i am 38 now so 31 years lies not joking lies <laughs> magical melanin man Brave. you're like so <laughs> great early i did so i like acknowledged that but at the same time like you've been practicing capoeira for 12 years so you've been practicing capoeira since you were like 15 like whoa nope 25 <laughs> Magical melanin. Yup. Yeah. Black don't crack. It don't. At all. Proof. <laughs> That's so cool. Yeah. Right. Okay. So we'll go ahead and we'll back forward again. Um, <laughs> so the, the series that you've got out now. Yeah. Or um, this kind of women through history. So give us, give us that. Okay. Um, so one of the things I've been doing most recently is actually going out and giving talks. Yes. And so I uh, started in schools. I've worked with Girls Inc. of Denver. I've been in high schools, elementary schools. And uh, last week I actually did my first collegiate spot. Ooh. And um, so the speech that I gave last week uh, was about the ways in which people's perceptions of queer and trans women have affected the lives of queer and trans women, which is a really academic way of putting it, but I haven't figured out how else to phrase it. Mm. Um, but here's a quick rundown, right? Okay. Starting in the Victorian area, going to about the 1980s. All right, corsets to Afros. Exactly. Here for it. Yeah, corsets to like punk rock, really. Okay. But um, but yeah. So like, all right. So Victorian era, uh, women were not thought to have a sexuality unto themselves. Like, if a man was involved, he imposed his sexuality upon the woman, and she graciously, you know, acquiesced, and and sex happened and children came out, oh. right? So, um, <laughs> but women were not considered to like be sexual beings unto themselves. And if they were toward men, they were deviant. Um, and so women who uh, eschewed the touch of a man uh, were seen as romantic friends. So, right, you got two ladies, you know, strolling around arm in arm, they shared the same pillow and it was adorable. Oh. And it was kind of like an accepted thing. Uh, around the 1860s, they started going to school um, because they were girls only colleges, so they're unchaperoned and they had like crushes on each other and it was yeah. super cute, right? Um, but rolled into like the 1910s, 19 teens, and the Germans have been studying sex. And the German sexologists have come up with this concept of the lesbian. This is a woman who loves other women. Uh, mm -hmm. in a way that they're supposed to, quote unquote, love other men, love men. Mm -hmm. And this is seen as aberrant behavior. So we have the German civic. We have the German civic. the term lesbian. We do. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Germans. Thank you, Germans. Appreciate it. Yeah, technically, thank you, Sappho, but whatevs. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so like, you know, they came up with this idea that women would actually have sex with one another. And once that cat was out of the bag, there was no putting it back in. <laughs> Romantic friends, gone. <laughs> Girls having crushes on each other at school, not the thing you want to look forward to anymore. It mm -hmm. is not as cute as it was. Mm -hmm. Well, into the 1920s now, uh, World War II has taken place. Yeah. Or sorry, World War I um, has already happened. Women have gotten the vote. They got that in 1919. And um, there is this era of like prosperity and like, you know, things are getting real open and liberal. And so like the shirt skirts are getting shorter mm -hmm. and like women the are getting flappers. looser. Yeah, the flappers. I love know? the flappers. Exactly, <laughs> you know? And so like women are starting to take control, right? I mean, they have been fighting for their rights for about a hundred years at this point. Mm -hmm. And they finally got them, you know? So yeah. super excited. Um, and so sexuality has become this sort of fluid thing where like it's actually cool to be bi. And 
okay to be lesbian, but they're like, mm, there's still that sort of deviance attached to it because mm -hmm. the sexologists were like, if you're a lesbian, then you're like a man trapped in a woman's body. That's the only way you have that level of aggressiveness because their little brains could wrap their minds around Clutches this house. idea <laughs> that women actually wanting to be sexual with other women. Clutches right? Exactly. So, um, yeah, the 20s were fun. Yeah. Uh, the liquor's flowing. Right. <laughs> Illegally, illegally. <laughs> Some of it was killing people. Right, it was an actual liquor. Right, also that. Um, but yeah, so you roll into the 1930s. The Great Depression hit 29, and with the Great Depression comes a whole lot of conservatism. And so now, anybody who is into this sort of aberrant behavior is being not necessarily persecuted, um, but it's kind of down low persecution. And so you know if parents find out that their daughters have been crushing on their schoolmates, they're likely to send them to a psychoanalyst. Because at this point, psychoanalysts are getting real popular, mm -hmm. and to Sigmund Freud and his ilk. So, oh, um, Sig right? Sig so Sig many Sig things to be said about Sigmund. <laughs> um, but yeah, so, you know, um, now they're trying to come up with cures mm. for lesbian behavior. So psychoanalysis is one of them. Um, and they have tried like hormone therapy, which mm -hmm. apparently they had in the 1930s. Yeah. Uh, and have gone so far as to actually removing part of one of a woman's adrenal gland. Basically, the adrenals were causing an over ex an, an excessive amount of aggression. And so, if we can curb that aggression, maybe we'll curb this whole aberrant sexuality as well. Yeah. So, that's the 1930s. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> 1940s, World War II kicks off. Yeah. All the men have left the country. Yes. Well, not all, but like a whole lot of them have the left ones the country. Are useful. They're gone now. Right. Mm -hmm. And so uh, women are not only entering the workforce, mm -hmm. but they're also entering the military. And um, guess who is awesome if, to have on your team? If you are a military leader and you need some lady to do men's work. Lesbians. Lesbians. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I could just see the like World War II propaganda right? calling on lesbians. <laughs> they didn't quite do that. They, there was a half-assed attempt to actually oh, weed out the number of lesbians. Missed opportunity. Right. No, USO. They totally did. Um, yeah, there was a half-assed attempt to actually weed out the lesbians, and what ended up happening was like you know the president sent a message to like the woman, uh, the chief, the head of the uh, WAAC, which is women's. Army Auxiliary Corps, and um, he was like, hey, can you give me a list of all the lesbians, and, you know, we're going to get them out, and she was like, uh, I could do that, but here's the thing, I'd be at the top of that list, <laughs> then all of your admins on the list, all of your pilots, <laughs> like, all the so people doing actual work, all the people doing all the things, so yeah. maybe you want to reconsider this whole concept, yeah. and so, you know, that's how that all went down. Um, that's hilarious. So people wild? are like, we want to weed out all the queer people. And it's like, well, the queer people are the ones doing the work. It's like, you're, you're telling a queer person that you want to weird out all the queer people. Right? <laughs> that's what's <laughs> happening. <laughs> we should have a conversation. Yep. It's like, much. I'm not going to give you a list that's going to get me out of my job for one. And yeah. for two, if I do, who going to get this job? Exactly. You need me. You know exactly. this. Exactly. That's why you talk to me about this. Right? Um, yeah. <laughs> so that's how that went down. Work in progress. Right? Well, thank you. Thank you so much. I will put all of the links to her social media down below. Buy her prints. Buy me her prints. Just buy prints. Make that happen. We're waiting on this, this series of t-shirts. I am geeked for the series of t-shirts. All of her social media is down below. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Do you want to be featured on sexuality? Do you use something that's super cool and super interesting that I want to talk to you? So let me know. Links are down below. And I will see y'all later. Bye. Nice.